Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final game of the night here for the EGFC Big East Invitational. It's going to be St. John, who have been completely defeated all day, looking for their first win against Villanova, who pretty much are having to win this match in a 3-0 if they want contention. That is almost sure. I'm not 100% positive right now, but I will update you, or one of us will update you as soon as possible. I'm your Casper Corbin. Alongside with me is Squid, the absolute beast, the absolute legend. He lives under deep, but he comes out when we need him the most. He shines bright like a diamond. Squid. I don't think squids are known for doing that, but okay. Uh, you know what? Okay. You know, I, I accept with open arms. My new uh, biology. <laughs> I said we were going to have this talk later. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Rocket League first time. Riles Rocket at the right side wall. Primal trying to go ahead for a challenge. 50-50 win is going to go his way. I'm a horse. There in the corner trying to make something happen, but now our camp playing it down. Villanova believe their record is right now at three and four, while well, St. John's at uh, an even Steven 0 and 7. Yes. I think we're going to have uh, our records update as well here before too long, so we can talk about our playoff, uh, our playoff situation because it is a bit weird to say the very least. Lots of contenders for that number two spot. Of course, the ball sitting out there at the number one spot solidly. Confirm Villanova, as you mentioned, absolutely need this win. And so far, it's been a rather even game. Actually, three shots in favor of St. John's thus far. I'm horse. Trying to clear it out of the corner for this Nova side. Our camp is there, but it is going to be Zen over towards this right side. The rotation's now back for St. John as Villanova now try to make this push up on the offensive side. Playing a little bit of passive here so far is the side of Villanova, not looking to make any mistakes, looking to play off the mistakes of St. John's, and that is exactly what Riles will do. A pass from I'm Off Horse over towards the right side of the goal will be up and ready. Riles puts it right on in on a sneaky little angle, and my lips are now quivering because of that delicious goal. Oh dear. Uh, you may want to get that checked out. But I do agree it was a nice angle with a good pass. Uh, still, uh, <laughs> it's a bit worrying. <laughs> Two minutes gone, and Villanova will gladly take that lead. They're looking for another one, but no bump comes through. Justin lives to tell the tale of that defensive play. So yeah, narrowly escapes death there. Narrowly indeed. I, I honestly thought that I'm a horse was going to get that flip reset and be able to put that one in, but I actually don't think he got the flip reset, which is why he didn't end up going through and following through with it. I think maybe only like two or three of his tires touch the ball. So either way, it is going to be Riles though off a beautiful pass. Once again, I'm a horse to Riles. It's like a horse and his jockey. As they are just going back and forth here in game number one. Both goals going through those two. Well, stallion and man. Half man, half horse is a tandem. It's kind of like one of those costumes where you have one in the front, one in the back. Well, I thought you were talking about a centaur. But I, well, I it's kind of like a centaur, too. but I mean, we're going for realism here. Okay. Imagine going for realism in 2019. <laughs> Would you believe it? Confirmed. But uh, this is going to be an easy shot for Riles. Baiting out the last man. And no third man rotation here for St. John's. Questionable at best. But Villanova will gladly take that insurance. Zen with the assist there is going to allow Riles to go ahead and put that one. A 3-0 lead for the side of St. John. This one looked close to the beginning. Now getting out of hand to the touch. But... Now it is going to be cleared in towards the side of St. John's, trying to get it out. Will be Primal, Justin, and our camp. Our camp, the substitution coming in for the side of St. John about two games ago. Has he helped out? Well, a little bit. Has it been a lot of the same things that we've been seeing from St. John all day long? Yes, it has. Uh, I think they need to go back to the drawing board here after this is all said and done. Really get some more practice going and uh, really just figure out their identity as a team. Uh, I don't think they have a clear-cut identity of who they want to be or what roles they want to play as, but it is going to be an off-touch. It was in the left-side corner of the net, but unfortunately wasn't able to go in. A little bit of mind games trying to be played there by Zen, but now I'm a horse gets the clear from Justin out into the corner. Our camp up off the back wall. Touch in for Riles. Riles has a hat trick so far here in game number one, trying to go for more. Digging for gold, isn't able to find it. Our camp, nice pass to I'm a horse. I'm a horse in towards the middle side. He's actually going to save it on his own, so what a save. Primal Horse is his team it is isn't able to get the goal there. 
And I think uh, donations accepted if you're a St. John's player, so they'll gladly have that safe <laughs> on their side. But uh, if you're a Villanova fan, then that may, may have been a little bit unfortunate. It does look like they're not going to have too much trouble with it anyways. And uh, Bump against Justin actually ends up working out. And this what? is the strangest thing. <laughs> what? What's, what's then right here? I believe it was him. Yep. Accidentally. So he bumps him, but doesn't go... You know, huh? yeah, I think it's more like the mental, you know, aspect of like, yeah. oh no, I've been bumped, and then it kind of causes issues, you know, back. That could often yeah, so happen. That's, that then he thinks he's like, he's trying to bump him to where he thinks he's playing in his own goal, so the mind games there is like, oh, I'm going to save the ball for my teammates. I, I see what he was going for. That's a smart play. 200 IQ plays. Exactly. Yeah. Does look like game one securely in Villanova's grasp here for our final series of the night, and that will be the final uh, broadcasted series at the very least. I'm certain that we're going to have the finals later. I believe those are set for tomorrow between Group 1 and Group 2's top two players. Nice doink here by Zen, but nobody there for the follow-up. Primal will send that one away. But I am not, I'm not certain what the standings are precisely right now, but we may have to go to a tiebreaker because there are three teams who are incredibly closely matched, that being Marquette, Villanova, and Xavier Esports. Final 10 seconds now on the clock, though. Villanova with a solid lead here. St. John's do not have single goal on the board, unfortunately. They've had a sizable drought now. And there you go. That's actually a third of the series done if Villanova can sweep. Well, building off of what you were saying with the records, uh, we said at the beginning of this uh, game number one start, Villanova had to come out and they needed this win extremely, extremely badly to go ahead and help them into the rest of the night, of course, into trying to make that single elimination bracket playoff between the top two teams out of each group. And so far, they've been able to do that for themselves. A 4-0 victory there in game number one, a nice shutout over the side of St. John's. And as they continue to make their moves and plan their attack for the next game, uh, I think it's important that we go ahead and talk about uh, all the other teams. DePaul, obviously, they played fantastic today. And uh, they're going to finish with almost a guaranteed uh, number. I don't of know. Points. They could have played better. Yeah, they could have played better. But ah, uh, yeah. I mean, they weren't, they weren't that know. good. I mean, seven, they were all right, but I could I could beat them easily. Seven zero right now. Yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> take it from a couple of casters. They're not that good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like we have any authority on that? <laughs> but uh, well, yeah. I gotta let yeah. you know. I was. Uh, <laughs> I actually got the champ one. You know. <laughs> so, oh my god. Memes aside, though, DePaul did do a fantastic job. Incredible. They were they were good all day long, and that that just goes to show that playing consistently all day, uh, it works wonders for your team. Xavier, they they played a lot better. Oh, they played a hell of a lot better as the day went on, and it showed. It showed. They're now in. At, at first, we thought they might have been down there with with uh, with St. John for for being out early, being out of contention early, and now they're almost in a three-way tie with Marquette and Villanova for that second spot going into that single elimination bracket. And that's really all you can ask for, right? To turn things around. You might start off slow, but if you can turn that back around and really find yourself later in the round, later in the game, as well, asking, that's all you can ask for. And we did comment. I mean, you know, they went down with those two games early on, but it's not its not the end of the story. And that's one, one thing that we really harped on when we were watching those matches is that regardless of the fact that Xavier went down uh, two series at the very beginning. It was not the end of their adventure in this tournament. And now, like you said, they're up there, up there, competing with the big dogs for one of those top two spots. And Villanova still haven't uh, secured that tie spot either. And we might just got an update on our records. Let me take a look at that real quick, and I'll get back to you real quick. Well, in the meantime, while he's doing that, we've got a game of Rocket League to watch in front of us, and a shot on goal, not going to be able to fall. Can he find the acute angle? Not going to happen. It will be back the other way, and now middle map. Mid-pitch control still being held down by Villanova. A shot close to goal. It's set up over the middle. I'm a horse is up, galloping up to the stars. He's trying to find his calling, and now it looks like it will be to put that one right back down towards middle map. Can he go ahead and rotate back? He's got a tall order to get it, but he will be able to come through and find it. A shot on goal, not going to follow. It is going to be Riles taking it back down the other way. No one back for the side of St. John except for Justin. And now a shot on goal will fall through. I'm a horse up in the sky. A carrot in his eyes. 
That ball goes to the top right of the goalpost, and, well, beautifully placed shot. Primal tried to save that one. He tried all of his might, but, you know, a primal animal. You can't beat a horse in some situations. It's like beating a dead horse. But either way, do you have those updated standings for us? Or should I keep going a little bit longer? We do indeed. Xavier currently sitting at 4-3, and three, and Villanova at 3-4, and four, so they absolutely need this win to be in contention. Marquette currently at 3-3 three and three as well, and then of course St. John 0-7, oh and, and DePaul at 7-0. and oh. So this is a must-win match for Villanova, and then even after that, they might not even make that second place spot. That would be a downer. They gotta rely on the side of Xavier losing their next match, and if I'm not mistaken, they uh, they either play Marquette or... or uh... Xavier is playing as Marquette for their, uh, for their final match. Interesting. So that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. Very interesting to say the least. And I know I just said that twice, but you know sometimes you gotta say things hey, twice to really reinforce the fact of what you're saying. That'll be interesting, all right? You know, even if it is, it's just gonna be that interesting. But we have to say it two times. In any case, Villanova, yeah, they will need this win. They can't count on Xavier losing to DePaul again because they're not playing against DePaul again. They cannot take that risk. Shot on goal, Justin, gonna be able to put that one on and now tie game here with a minute and 47 seconds left. Villanova now need to be on the offensive to take this one to the house and into SJU's mouth. If they wanna go ahead and take the series, the three to one, three to nothing, or of course just win it outright in a game five as well. There's so many different scenarios that this could play out to St. John looking for a map win here, desperately looking for some sort of semblance of a winning team I guess you could say but nonetheless they're trying they are trying not to take anything away from them they didn't play terrible today they've kept a lot of these games close that they've been playing it just comes down to the wire and they're not able to completely outright take the game so Riles is there but I'm a horse that's the second time he's done that today in the last two games against St. John and he blocks another shot by his teammate I'm not even sure if that one was on target, but, you know, certainly would have been nice to find out if you're a Villanova player. You now, Riles actually gets bumped into that one, and it's going to stay in the zone. Riles does get a nice flick up high. Villanova now is coming down to the wire, as he said. St. John's, they are pretty shy on map wins for this tournament so far, so they gladly go to overtime into golden goal territory. Things really starting to heat up for the Villanova squad. They obviously don't want to lose any more games than they have to for tie-breaking purposes. The backside, Riles. Shot on goal, shot on target. Not going to be able to find the save. It's going to be Riles. He's got a goal here inside of game number two. And more importantly, he has been playing out of his mind this entire series against the St. John. That first one, he and I'm a horse teaming up to be a powerhouse. As well as him getting pretty much every single goal that last game. But we got to go ahead and look at the entire day today. If you had to pick one player from any team to be your MVP today, who would it be? And I think I know who you're probably going to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I know like, who you're going to say as well. And uh, I just, just want to make sure, like, there's so many names in my head. It's been a long day. Yeah, all right, I'm getting this right. It's Karma Juni, by far. Of course. I mean... Karma Juni has been the top dog all day long. Again, like we said, He's been playing every single side of the ball correctly. He's been playing it fantastic. And there's not anything better you could ask for than a teammate who is well-rounded and seems like he could potentially even be a leader for that team, especially since he came back and they started doing so well once he was swapped in for that Merc player earlier in the day. So either way, GG's to Villanova as they take game number two and now going into the third and final possibly match of this series and potentially the 3-0 sweep. It is going to be Villanova trying their hand one last time and fighting for that 4-4 four and four record to get inside of those top two spots for the best of one bracket. And getting inside of that top two spots, you know, and there's an asterisk there. They do not have a guaranteed top two spot if they win this, but they might have that chance. I have to say, you know, it has been a wild day. So potentially the last game of the entire double round robin for this Villanova roster right here. St. John's Still has a chance to play spoiler, but they have to make a reverse sweep. And uh, I'm not certain, but I'm just going to go back through. I'm just going to go back through the records. I don't think 
that St. John's has managed to take a single game yet. Or no, they did manage to take one game off of Marquette. So there you go. Interesting. They've kept it close, but they have taken a game off of Marquette. And that's not the way you want to start if you're a St. John's fan. Zen, seven seconds into the game, taking the pass from Riles. Well, Villanova, I got to tell you one thing. You're making a hell of a case to try and get to this last spot in the playoffs. But the one thing I will say is that you can't afford to play slow out of the gates or slow throughout the day. You got to be able to come at the opposing team every single time throughout tomorrow if you do potentially make it into that bracket. You can't afford to start slow. You can't afford to play bad. You have to continuously win your games and win your matches, and that's the most important thing that I can tell any team to do, especially when we're playing in a single elimination bracket. Zen's going to be popping up towards the sky, and that will be our campus with them as well. But Nova, they've really got to focus tomorrow on being able to take advantage of the opportunities given to them if they do end up making it. Again, that's a big if. They got to keep their minds with the here and now. They haven't finished this quite yet. They do have the lead presently, and Get another chance right here. The horse coming off the sidewall. No, that angle is just a little bit wide. But we'll touch back out towards the center. But four minutes now on the clock. St. John's going to have to score at least two goals here to stay alive in this series. Still got a lot of time left. A minute and 15 seconds ticked off the clock here so far. But I'm a horse in the rest of this Villanova squadron trying to bring this one back down. St. John's has had the ball in their half for so long this entire series. It seems like every time the ball is somewhere on the field, I'm seeing it in the blue half, and it continues to be that way every time. They'll get it clear here and there, but I'd say 70 to 30% of the time, it's on that blue half of St. John's. So trying to bring this one back, a pass in towards middle map. I'm a horse, barely misses the touch on that one, brings it up the wall, trying to bring a pass to his teammate. It's just going to be a floater, potentially a sinker, Riles is there, but not able to get the touch past the defender. There will be another opportunity on the defensive side to clear this one out towards Villanova's half. It won't last long, though, Villanova. Again, I mean, this has been the strategy for seemingly every team that we've seen play against St. John's so far is just, you know, put up the box. <laughs> As, you know, it is a simple strategy, but it is rather effective so far. And we've seen it utilized so many times that I feel like it might almost be demoralizing almost for the St. John's players. As I said, uh, I actually went through the rest of the records. They did take one game off of Xavier University in the first round robin as well, so they've only got two game wins. Even combining their game wins, they don't have a single series. They have to... Oh my goodness. I, I just can't uh, emphasize enough the mental strain that that must provide for any Rocket League player. Yeah. Uh, one, one word we use inside of... Uh, or, or one phrase, I would say, inside of Call of Duty that we use... Uh, a lot more than, I guess you would say, Rocket League. It's, it's this idea of contain and corral. Uh, and what that is, is essentially it's just making sure you have the ball in a specific area. Then you're able to contain that area and your teammates can rotate around that area that you have contained and corralled. So what happens is they'll get the ball in a specific area and then that'll allow the teammates to rotate around and be able to, like you have, like you said, have that box, right? And that box is essentially the whole aspect of contain and corral. It's just rotate in and out, in and out, and just make sure they can't get that ball past a certain point. Absolutely, but St. John's now pushing out. Here with 95 seconds on the clock, there is still time to make something out of this final. Got that boost on the side. And still make an effective play here. 50-50 goes way out of their favor. Unfortunately, in our camp, no contact made. It's gonna kill momentum. And Villanova looking for the bump play. They find it. Primal uh, taken way out of the play. In our Hunt just uh, gave us an update. He said Marquette needs to win their one game against Xavier to force a three-way tie. If Xavier wins, they take second place. So everything is in the hands of Marquette right now. If Marquette wins, they force a three-way tie. Even if Nova wins this, if Xavier wins their game against Marquette, Xavier will have the second spot, and both Marquette and Nova will be taken out and eliminated from contention for the single elimination bracket. That's a, uh, that's a lot of weight right there, and so uh, the things I'm assuming, I'm assuming will fall the game differential, but I do not know. So don't quote me on that one. I have not had a chance to thoroughly review the rules, but 
Things looking pretty bleak here for St. John's, and now three gold deficit with only 42 seconds left to go. That might be the final nail in the coffin. It looks like our time is coming to an end here on the broadcast. Oh no. No, oh, I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> oh come on. Come on, yeah. it's not that bad. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna put that act on anymore, but I'm a horses there. Our cam trying to bring this one down, but this must be demoralizing if you're a St. John fan or even a St. John player. You gotta just understand that even though this happens, you gotta just take it with stride, take it in stride rather, and, and just grow from it. You know, it's easier to say when you're not on the team playing, uh, and you're just an outside spectator, but that's the best advice that anybody could give you. Learn from it, move on, take everything in as constructive, opposed to just, you know, getting down about a loss or something like that, right? So, <clears throat> even here, you've got the top side of Villanova playing extremely well. They have a lot on the line. The St. John's team doesn't really have anything on the line. They don't, they don't have anything to lose, either. So, they're just playing Rocket League. And if they win, they win. If they lose, they lose. And that's just simple as that. After those first, you know, three, four losses today for St. John's, it was kind of over. But Primal finally getting one on the board there. That does at least stop the bleeding and uh, ends the drought. Of, uh, I'm not scoring anything. But unfortunately, either, either you know, unfortunately for them, you know, we don't go by last goal to be scored wins. Yes. Otherwise, yeah, they would just that would have been amazing for them. That's just not how it works. And they're gonna pick up another one here. And uh, I, I think now is the time when Villanova thinks to themselves, "All right, guys, let's just uh, well, let's make sure that we what we get the, somebody in the net for the next kickoff because you don't want to run the risk of that." And then play another game, which, I mean, could go either way. If you play another game, clean slate at the very start, and St. John's have shown that they've had a little bit of life, but, yeah, as I suspected, Villanova playing it safe on the kickoff, and they will advance their record to 4-4 four and four to end their double round robin and this series. Folks, before we do go ahead and, and close this out, I just want to say thank you so much for, uh, for having me. Uh, as well as Squid here. Uh, it's been it's been a great time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching these teams. I know they appreciate it just as much as they or we appreciate you guys for coming out here and, uh, and supporting us and uh, enjoying the stream with us as well. Watch a lot of good Rocket League. We didn't have any Game 5s today, unfortunately, but uh, we had a great time. I know I had a great time personally. First time casting with Squid went extremely well, so uh, there's nothing but love from me, guys. So uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for having me. And I'm Squid as well. And make sure to tune in for the finals tomorrow. I'm unfortunately not going to be here. But, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit busy. Otherwise, I would uh, I would certainly try and see about it. But uh, I don't know about you, McCormill. Are you going gonna to be there for the finals? Well, I know uh, I'll be watching, but I, uh, I'm i not sure about anything else. But uh, we'll just have to see and take it in stride, just yeah. like the loss for St. John's. I'm, I'm hoping to see if I, can, uh, if I can get that on my Twitch as well. I think that's that's just about it from us. It's been the end of a oh my goodness, it's been a long day of broadcasting yes. for both you, me, and uh, Haunt. So it's a uh, it's been fun, and I look forward to maybe maybe doing it again in the future. Depends on how things pan out, but can't wait for those finals tomorrow. I hope you guys are excited. Bring more popcorn. I most certainly ran out and i think mick cornmeal did too it's been a pleasure <laughs> working with everyone here at egf and we hope you guys all have a good night show up bright and early tomorrow for those finals dishes boys <laughs>